Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be discussing about waveguide isolator. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. First of all, I'll be discussing about basics of waveguide isolator. After that, I'll explain internal structure of waveguide isolator. After that, I'll explain functioning of waveguide isolator. And at last, I'll derive scattering parameters of waveguide isolator. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of waveguide isolator. The waveguide isolator that is simply two port device. So with waveguide isolator, we have two ports. Here using waveguide isolator, we can isolate one port from another port. In waveguide isolator, signal flows in only one direction. Usually waveguide isolator is used just after microwave source in microwave taste bench. Let me explain you how. If you observe here, we have block of waveguide isolator in which arrow is shown. If you observe practically how it appears, then in your laboratory, you might have seen this waveguide isolator. With this waveguide isolator, you can observe here arrow is shown. What it means, signal can flow in this direction only. Means if I say here we have port number 1 and here we have port number 2, then signal can flow from port number 1 to port number 2. It cannot flow from port 2 to port 1. So here using this waveguide isolator, we can isolate this port with respect to this port, right? In microwave test bench, you can observe we use waveguide isolator just after microwave source. So here we have klystron supply and here we have waveguide isolator. This isolator is isolating this supply with respect to microwave circuit over here. So as if any reflection happens over here, then that reflected signal cannot go over here with this supply. So to protect this supply, we are using waveguide isolator over here. Means we are isolating devices which are there in this direction as signal can flow in this direction only. So this supply is providing signal that will go in this direction, but reflected signal cannot appear over here as it is isolated by this waveguide isolator, right? So waveguide isolator is just two port device. Here signal flows in one direction only. Here we use this waveguide isolator to isolate one port with respect to another port. And usually we use it just after microwave source in microwave test bench, right? Now I'll be discussing about working of waveguide isolator. As I have told you, in waveguide isolator, signal can flow from port 1 to port 2 only as per this arrow. Signal cannot flow from port 2 to port 1. So if you give input at port 1, then this wave that will get propagate from port 1 to port 2 without any attenuation. Ideally, there will be zero attenuation that one can say. But as if you give input to port 2, if you give input over here, if you give input over here, in that case, signal will not go at port 1. Means there will be infinite attenuation. Hence, output at this port will be 0. That is how simple working is there. But to understand that working, you need to understand internal structure. If you observe internal structure, then here we have port 1 and here we have port 2. Our agenda is to have a transfer of signal from port 1 to port 2, but signal should not come from port 2 to port 1. If you observe internal structure, then here, see by yellow color, I have shown resistive cards. These resistive cards offers high resistance to horizontally polarized waves. So as if EM wave is horizontally polarized, then after passing that EM wave through resistive card, there will be zero signal, right? These resistive cards are offering high resistance to 
horizontally polarized wave. See here we have twister. So if you observe, here we have 45 degree twister. So that 45 degree twister that is twisting polarization by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction. So here we have 45 degree twister that is rotating electric field by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction. And if you observe here we have ferrite road. This ferrite road that is rotating electric field by 45 degree and that direction is shown over here. Now here one thing that you need to understand. See this twister that will be twisting electric field by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction. Right. And this ferrite road that will be rotating electric field by 45 degree in this direction only. Now I'll explain you how exactly it is doing. So let us consider now we are giving input at port 1 and we want to observe what should be the output at port 2. So here if you observe input is given at port 1. So here we have resistive card and we are sending vertically polarized signal over here. So this signal is vertically polarized. So that is not having any resistance with this resistive card. The reason is this resistive card offers high resistance to horizontally polarized wave. Now here if you observe we have 45 degree twister. So that will be rotating electric field by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction. So we are sending signal in this direction. So anti-clockwise is this. So now in this direction orientation of electric field is there which is making angle 45 degree over here. After that this signal that goes to ferrite road. This ferrite road will be rotating this signal in this direction by 45 degree. Right. So now you can observe now this signal that is appearing vertical over here. And this vertical signal that we will be giving it to this resistive card that offers high resistance to horizontally polarized wave. Here we have vertical signal. So there won't be any resistance and this signal that will appear at port 2. So ideally whatever input that we give over here that will appear at port 2. But what will happen as if you give input to port 2. If you apply input to port 2 you see what will happen. See here we have resistive card. And here we are giving vertically polarized signal. So vertical signal that is appearing over here and that will come over here with this ferrite road. Now see this ferrite road that will be rotating signal in this direction by 45 degree. So now this signal, this signal that is rotated by 45 degree in this direction. Now see this signal that is coming to this twister. So after a twisting, that signal will become horizontal. Now question is how it is getting horizontal. If you see from this direction, then this twister that is twisting E field by 45 degrees in anti-clockwise. So from this direction anti-clockwise that is happening in this direction. So this 45 plus another 45 is making angle 90 degree over here. And that horizontal electric field signal that will appear at this resistive card over here and that resistive card offers high resistance to that signal. So here at port 1 you will be having zero signal ideally that one can say. That is how working is there. Right. Now I will derive scattering matrix with waveguide isolator. See with waveguide isolator we have two port network. This is port 1 and this is port 2. So waveguide isolator is two port device. One should know with two port device scattering matrix is two cross two matrix that is having four scattering parameters S11, S12, S21 and S22. If I say port 1 and port 2 are perfectly matched then return loss at port 1 and at port 2 will be zero. So S11 and S22 both are zero if you have port 1 and port 2 perfectly matched. As per the working of waveguide isolator, if you give input at port 1, then output at port 2 will appear. But if you give input at port 2, then at output at port 1 will be zero. 
what it means it means s12 is 0 s12 means what s12 means input at port 2 and output at port 1 right so here as per the working if you give input at port 2 output at port 1 is 0 means s12 is 0 so scattering matrix that is appearing like this in which s11 s12 s22 that will be 0 now i'll apply identity property of scattering parameters identity property means what identity property means scattering matrix into conjugate of scattering matrix that is equals to identity matrix let me explain you how see as per identity property s into s bar that is equals to identity so here we are multiplying s into s conjugate and as per that you will be having s12 that is equals to unity so practically s matrix of waveguide isolator that will be 0 0 1 0 where we have s21 that is equals to unity other coefficients are 0 right so that is how basic s matrix is there with waveguide isolator in which only signal flows from port 1 to port 2 here we are considering port 1 and port 2 are perfectly matched so return loss at port 1 and return loss at port 2 that is 0 that is how working and scattering matrix is there i hope you have enjoyed this session still if anything that you like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video